Well, the New York Jets travel to Foxborough to face their AFC East division rival New England Patriots this weekend. Both these teams sitting at 3-3, three and three, both these teams 4-2 and two against the number. However, the perception of these two teams is very, very different, and we know in sports betting, perception always precedes reality, and that's why we see a line like this. New England currently installed as a 10.5 point favorite in this game on bet deck, 47 the total. So people have a lot of faith in the Patriots, even though they've been surprisingly bad at times this year. Not only the loss last week, but that home loss to Arizona. A lot of people, myself included, still can't really get over that. 13.5 point favorites in that game and losing. So New England, are they the same team that we've seen over the last couple of years? Is this the Brady, Belichick, Patriots that we can rely on? They've looked the same on offense. Their offense, excellent once again. Tom Brady seems to still be at the peak of his powers. And in fairness, New England hasn't had a great defense over the last couple of seasons. So I understand why people see this New England team and think, well, there's no reason to panic. They look pretty much like the same team they have been over the last couple of years. Still, 10.5 points, a lot of points in this spot. The New York Jets, a division rival. The Jets have played New England tough historically since Rex Ryan's been there. And Rex Ryan, we, knows, we, we know that he, he points towards this game. He, he's made no secret since he took over as coach of the New York Jets. The New England Patriots are his target. They have ruled the AFC East for over a decade. And Ryan knows that if the Jets ever want to be considered a true contender in the AFC, they have got to establish themselves as the best team in their division, meaning they've got to topple the New England Patriots. Now, the Jets just haven't been quite as bad as everybody says they've been this year. They've looked really bad in a couple of games, especially that 34 nothing embarrassment against the San Francisco 49ers a couple of weeks ago. But this team's been a good team to back, 4-2 and two on the year. Despite all the negativity about this team, have you ever heard more negativity surrounding a team that was tied for first in their division through six weeks I haven't. I mean, every word, everything you hear about the Jets, it's, oh, what a terrible offense. Where are the playmakers? When are they going to make a change at quarterback? When is Rex Ryan going to get fired? They lost their best defensive player of the year for injury. This is a circus. This team is circling the drain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Jets have been in the news a lot, and none of it has been positive. Is all that negativity warranted? At times this year, it's looked as though it has been. Again, I, I point towards that 34 to nothing loss to the San Francisco 49ers. But in the last couple of weeks, the Jets have played a little better. They lost to Houston on that Monday night game, but played well in that game. They were very competitive. And last week, their best performance since week one and that victory over the Buffalo Bills in week one, last week they beat the Indianapolis Colts, looked very good in doing so. Finally got that power running game going really dialed back the passing game. A lot more conservative game plan from the Jets last week. Now, some of that had to do with the fact that they got off to a lead in that game. Some of that had to do with the fact that the Indianapolis Colts cannot stop the run, 29th, I believe, in the NFL in run defense. But I believe more of that had to do with the fact that Tony Sperano, Rex Ryan, they saw that what they were doing the last few games was not working. And it's not like the Jets were throwing the ball a whole lot, but they were throwing it more than they did in this last week's game against Indianapolis. Remember, Mark Sanchez only passed for 82 yards last week. And when they were throwing it, I think they were trying to throw it more downfield, trying to pick up some chunks in the passing game. And they didn't, they didn't do that last week. It was dink and dunk and dink and dunk. So Sanchez, as I said, only 82 yards passing. But the first time in five games, he's completed over 50% of his passes, and he did not turn the ball over once. And I think that's a lot more important to Rex Ryan and to Tony Sperano than passing yards at this point. They've said all year that they've wanted to win by, you know, smashing the other team in the mouth with that power running game. And really, until this last Sunday, it's only been a lip service. But last week, they, they really did that. They did some of that, pounded Sean Green. Sean Green, the best game of his career. Will he be able to carry over that momentum this week against the Patriots? Patriots are better on defense than Indianapolis still. Not a stout defense by any means. Now, how will the Jets use Tim Tebow? This has been the question circling the Jets all season. A lot of people thought that a quarterback change was imminent over these last couple of weeks, but Sanchez has done just enough now to hang on to the job, I think, at least for one more week. Jets have some serious run injury problems at the running back position this week. Behind Sean Green, who's their starting running back, they really don't have anything. Bilal Powell and Joe McKnight, their two backup running backs, both expected to miss this game. So we heard yesterday Tim Tebow might be used at running back in this game. Now, I'll be interested to see, will that be strictly at running back, or will they mix in some creativity? Still waiting for Tony Sperano to show some imagination and creativity in his usage of Tim Tebow. You know, we thought when they acquired him in the offseason that we were going to see something maybe innovative and different, and really haven't seen that. Tebow comes in the game for three or four plays a game, 
mainly just runs the ball. It really is, you know, you call it the wildcat formation, but that's a little misleading because normally we use the term wildcat when we're talking about a ball being snapped to a running back, and Tebow, of course, is a quarterback. But this year it really has been a wildcat formation because I believe Tebow's only thrown two passes from the quarterback position when he's been in the game. You know, they snap it to him and he runs the ball. And if you're not going to let him pass, I mean, that's the dimension that Tim Tebow, that Tim Tebow gives you in the wildcat that Ronnie Brown or Brad Smith or other guys who have run the Wildcat in the past haven't given you, and that is his ability to throw the ball. And whatever you think about Tim Tebow passing the ball, certainly passes it a lot better than most NFL running backs. I mean, the guy threw for over 300 yards last year in the playoffs against the number one defense in the league. So defenses expect the run when Tim, Tim Tebow comes in the game. I've been expecting Sperano to mix it up a little more and let him throw the ball, and we'll see this Sunday. When Tim Tebow is at quarterback, so uh, at running back, excuse me, so we're apparently going to see several plays with both Mark Sanchez and Tim Tebow in the backfield. We'll see if Sperano opens his mind a little bit, gets a little more creative, and draws up some plays. Maybe some run pass options for Tebow, or some straight passes even when he's in the backfield. Maybe a handoff where Tebow goes towards the line of scrimmage and then backs off. We saw him run that play many times last year with the Denver Broncos and throughout his collegiate career with the Florida Gators. So. How will Tim Tebow be used? Again, we don't know this Sunday. Once again, this continues to be a dominant storyline when we talk about the New York Jets. I think they're going to have to find some way to use him because the Jets are going to have to put up some points in this game. They are not going to be able to hold Tom Brady and this New England offense down. Brady, still at the peak of his powers. This New England offense has been extremely impressive this year. And the Jets, even though they're stout in the front seven, the Darrell Rivas injury no doubt hurts the team. They're not as strong in the secondary as they traditionally have been. So I think this is going to be another one of those games like last week where New England sort of neglects the run game. We saw last week, despite the fact the Patriots were fourth in the league in rushing heading into that game, they decided, I guess, they could not run it against Seattle. They spread it out and really threw it the whole game. I think we're going to see a similar game plan this Sunday against the Jets. I expect Tom Brady to throw the ball 45 or 50 times in this game. Now when you look at the line of this game again, 10 and a half. It seems a little too big in my opinion, but I, I'm not comfortable backing the Jets right now, given 10 and a half, because the Jets have been funny this year. Uh, you know, I, I still can't get that performance a couple weeks ago against the San Francisco 49ers out of my mind. Uh, this Jets team has looked good at times this year, but they've looked so bad at other times. Will New England just come out and outclass them and blow them out? Maybe. I think New England's going to have no trouble scoring, so as I said a minute ago, I think the New York Jets, if they want to stay competitive in this game, they're going to need to do something on offense. And what they did last week, just running Sean Green, I don't think that's going to be quite enough. So they're even going to have to mix in some downfield passing, and they are getting healthier on offense, the Jets. Wide receiver Stephen Hill, the rookie, back from injury. Tight end Dustin Keller, Mark, Sanchez, Mark Sanchez's favorite target. He's back as well. So some more options in the passing game now for the Jets. Will they throw it downfield a little more? Will they allow Tim Tebow to do some passing? Will they use him, sort of, will Tony Sperano use his imagination and try to create some offense with Tim Tebow? Remains to be seen. And Now, the over is a, bet, is a bet in this game, I think, deserves consideration. 47 is the total. Some trends pointing towards the over in this game. The over is 19-7 and seven in New York's last 26 road games, 16-7 and seven in New England's last 23 home games. And the last six times these two teams have played, the over is 5-0-1. So again, some things pointing you in the direction of the over here. Totals are just so tough, though. I'm not a huge fan of betting totals. You know, unpredictable things like red zone turnovers can mess up over bets. And unpredictable things like special teams touchdowns, defensive touchdowns can mess up under bets. So if you're going to put my feet to the fire in this game, I guess my recommendation would be New England on the money line. Now, I know that's kind of lame, not going too far out on a limb there, saying a 10.5 point favorite should win the game. New England on the money line right now can be had at 121 on bet deck. And that is my favorite bet in this game. As I said, I, I, it's just too many points here. I'm not comfortable laying 10.5 points in this spot. Also not comfortable backing the Jets in this spot. And even though over 47, I do think deserves some consideration, my favorite bet here and my recommendation would be New England on the money line.